God is good, and with each day that passes brings us a day closer to the launch of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. This is Nathan Napalm Channel, and if you are new here, please consider subscribing, especially if you're interested in Pantheon-related content on our march to launch. Today, guys, we're going to talk about something very exciting, something that we barely even scratched the surface on in this channel and that is crafting here's the deal here's what's always got me thinking in my mind whirling about the crafting system everything we've heard so far all the details of every single system in the game has been geared towards being a social type experience something that isn't just you, but it's bigger than you. It, it involves the rest of the community on your server, etc., in some fashion or form. So I've always been, now of course crafting, you, you sell it to other people, that kind of thing, obviously. But the thing that's always been a question on my mind is how do you take a crafting system and then implement it in such a way that it's still a social experience, it still adds to the immersion and the world without just the generic, you're selling it to other people as well as the other big question that we've all been wondering which is what items are going to be more powerful is it going to be the crafted items because i definitely see the value in crafted items being some of the best gear that you can get etc on the other hand what about raiding there has to be a big reward for going after and trying to defeat massive things and grind that out and try to get that those drops as well and I wondered how Panther Rise Bomb is going to handle that. And it looks like we have some pretty good answers. First, let's listen to this clip, and then we'll discuss. The general goal is that Pantheon will have a, a fairly deep and rewarding experience on the crafting side. Um, beyond just chasing like the next recipe or the next skill point, I'd really like to see crafters be able to contribute to the world at large. Um, for example, imagine like provisioners meeting up at a tavern and having a cooking party. With enough participation, a nearby table or counter might spawn a feast that um, people passing by could interact with for a buff. Similarly, imagine like a scenario where alchemists might gather an apothecary and whip up some potions. Um, a nearby cauldron or flask rack might have a random or fixed potion or poison effect that, you know, passersby could consume to see if they are lucky or not. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a hazard when you're reaching into unknown stuff, I suppose. Um, Another type of crafting related event I'd like to see is allowing crafters to like complete certain types of writs to buff NPCs in the surrounding area. Uh, completion of enough of the appropriate blacksmithing writ, for example, might give nearby guards uh, better armor for a while, or completion of enough woodworking writs might give nearby archers better arrows for a period of time. Um, I'd also like to see crafters able to influence vendor supplies through uh, quest writs or uh, sorry, quests or writ completions. For example, um, enough of the appropriate stonemasonry writ might spawn uh, a limited supply of gems, ores, and related crafting materials to nearby vendors that sell those kinds of things. So once again, Visionary Realms take something that I thought I had seen all there was to see, and they're taking a step further, and I love it. That's why I love Visionary Realms. So the fact of being able for several people in the cooking profession to get together and make this huge, bountiful meal, right, together by working together and crafting together, and then, you know, at the tavern, set this up on a table, and then guess what? People want to stop by the tavern to get their buff, right? To grab a buff or two. Uh, it, number one, it gives a reason to go to the tavern, which is always my thing. I wish the memos did a better job of is making people want to hang out at taverns. I think Star Wars Galaxies did a good job with that kind of, but that's besides the point. This is a way to make crafting social again. And then they go on to talk about other professions and things affecting the world itself. Doing enough writs to open up for gems and things that previously weren't available to the vendors, right? Opens them up to where now they are, so it benefits the world at large. You get the benefit of someone who is a higher level or able to complete these writs, and you get to, if you are that person, then you get to share something with the world and with the community, something that they get a benefit from as well, which is something I absolutely love. Now let's listen to this next clip where it goes just a little bit further. I think it's just really important that beyond also, you know, just like the, the grind to to get to like the end of the progression um that you know it's, it's really important if we're making a, a living kind of breathing world where we want people to be immersed and kind of have a stake in what's going on that we give them meaningful ways to kind of you know feed into that it's it's not really just so much about like what you can create but what can you do with your skills yeah that's it i think that's important so when it comes to items, how will crafted items be distinguished from looted items so that they're both equally desirable to players? And I know this is a huge problem in a lot of games that 
a lot of other companies have had trouble <laughs> kind of balancing. So I, uh, how are we going to do that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very important to the uh, the team that, you know, items have and largely retain their own identity. Like, uh, both categories of items will provide unique items that can only be found either by looting them or crafting them or looting them parts of them first and crafting them. Um, rather than looking at how they can compete with one another, I'd rather see it as how they can complement one another. Um, there's a few ways we might achieve this. Simplest way is through, like, alteration of existing item to gain a new item with its own identity. Um, some examples might be, like, taking Eridun's flaming sword from a you know, lengthy and difficult adventuring quest chain, there might be a recipe or crafting method to transmute those stats and the effects into Eridun's Thundering Blade or Eridun's Freezing Cutlass. Um, another example might be like a crafted robe, um, Robe of the Last Magi, just pulling stuff out of my bum here, but uh, might be a powerful item with its own hefty stats and a, a passive mana regen effect or something to that effect. Um, it might be tradable to a wandering or summoned spirit from bygone age, um, giving players the opportunity to receive a war wizard's drape in exchange with its own unique stats and a passive spell damage effect or something on par in, in relative power to the crafted rope. Um, providing opportunities and adventuring related quests uh, to have crafting alternates, uh, like quest completion conditions and vice versa would be another way we can um, sort of have them coexist and complement each other, uh, having an upgrade path for adventuring related items through crafting, allowing players to increase existing stats and potency of existing effects on an item by a fixed percentage. So you're going to get that sweet raid loot, um, I don't know, sort of dragon slang, and you want to have 5% more potency on the existing stats, and maybe it's got like a, a dragon bane DD effect that only affects dragons, and you could you know increase the, the damage by a fixed percent as well through the upgrade path. Um, it covers a lot of the professions with equipable slots. It doesn't really cover so much like alchemy and provisioning. So I kind of imagine the way that plays out is um, slightly improved potency from the consumables. So like if it's a heal effect or a buff effect of some sort, like you would see that, uh, see a similar increase. Um, improved effect durations in the upgrades. So if it was, you know, a 10 minute buff from a potion, it might instead be like a 12 minute buff. Um, Possibly even allowing like for group consumption in the case of like you know an upgraded uh, like alchemy recipe or uh, provisioning recipe might be able to put down like a keg or a feast or in alchemy's case like uh, you know a cauldron or flask pot people can reach into. Yeah, absolutely, man. That sounds awesome. Um, yeah, it's I understand like people like people are very strongly in in two camps a lot of times with like only the best stuff should ever come from adventuring or yeah. only the best stuff should come from crafting. I, th I think we can really um, play to both and the systems will probably be at best when, when they just work together. That's right. You can blur the lines and still win on both sides. It's just how we go about doing it. So what this sounds like to me is a system where, as he said it, they complement one another. So if you were to go out and you were to get this awesome piece of gear and you got it from a raid or from a, a rare drop kind of situation, that's just not the end of the story, right? Then you can take it to a crafter and I'm starting to feel uh, the vibes as if um, you could even like pieces of gear, not weapons, but like actual armor pieces or, you know, what have you, that you'd actually be able to maybe take this to a crafter and maybe have them imbue it with something to help even with the acclimation system a little bit to give it a little stats to help with the cold resist or something like that. Or, as he mentioned directly, you know, changing its attributes to actually like the thundering version or, you know, adding things to that piece to make it even more valuable. And I think that's very interesting and it'll be really cool to see how all that plays into the kind of self-identity of giving your of giving your character his his or her own kind of deal you know what i mean to kind of your own kind of build all right because if there's going to be this many options as far as bringing things to crafters to have them imbue and add statistical value to things then that's going to really change up the meta it's also going to change up how people perceive their character and what kind of things that character can do and kind of make it more unique per person playing the game if you know what i mean so i think it's very interesting i'm there's a lot more to cover and i will cover more going forward but i thought this was a great place to start 
start because the I felt like this kind of answered some very basic questions we had about crafting since they started this project and you know there's not a lot of information out there about crafting so we got a lot of information to cover now with the newest round table and I will be covering that and breaking that down video by video thanks for joining me today I hope you stick around and subscribe and check out the hundreds of other videos I've done on Pantheon Rise of Fallen and all the various complicated things and theories and everything and there is a playlist here on my channel so you can watch that at your leisure and until next time guys god bless and happy gaming listen to what I say I've been making videos all day my friends all say I'm it's a video buffet you can even hit replay but please just subscribe i can't even describe being part of my tribe i'll even offer you a prize but just please just subscribe and hit the bell notification too